Letter Funner here. Today I'm doing a video on how to install a cylinder head on this uh, 87 foot that I've got here. It's got an 89 350 in it. This video had been recorded a long time ago. This truck's been in the mud since uh, that video was recorded. And keep in mind that this is a mud truck that I'm working on, therefore I didn't bother painting anything. I just uh, cleaned things up as best as I could. It's an old beater truck and I just use it in the mud so if you want to see how I got to this point uh, I'll be posting a link right up here to a video on how to remove the intake and a video right here on prepping the head and this video I'm going to continue it where I left off and that's with installing the gasket. So if you weren't paying attention when you were taking the old head gasket off. I was paying attention and I wrote it on this one. It says engine side, I don't know if you can see it, it's sort of wiped off already. Right there. The difference is these two steel rings are not joined on the engine side, but on the head side they are. Now, put your gasket up on the, on the little dowel pins. Everything should be in place. Just gotta get my refooting here. I know I'm probably in your way here, but just gently set it down in place on, to, on one of those uh, dowels. There you go. I just put a couple of bolts in the ends of the heads here, just to make it a little bit easier to hang on to. Just put one on each end. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is put some thread sealer on the bolts, on the threads. Now don't just go out to your plumbing store and pick up, or hardware store and pick up uh, just regular thread sealer because that just won't do for this. You need the uh, high temperature thread sealer. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. So you don't need to put much on there. Just once around the threads like that, that's good. I'm just going to keep on putting thread sealer on until I'm done all the bolts. And then I'll be back. Now like I said before, there's seven long ones. They all go in the center here. And then there's two shorter ones. One goes in this end and one goes in this end down at the other end. And then of course the shorter ones all go down in the bottom. I was almost done putting all my head bolts in and I had a couple of little visitors here. Three actually. Some of the neighbor kids. And they were selling my favorite chocolate bar. What a break. So now I'm on break. Coffee, my favorite drink, and these, hmm, what a break. So what I'm doing now is tightening all the bolts down until they're almost touching the, the head. I've got all the bolts tightened down like this one, so that it's almost touching the head. The reason for that is you're supposed to drip some engine oil in between the bolt and the head so that when you go to torque it, you get an accurate torque. 
So spray a little bit of engine oil all the way around every one of those bolts. And I know I'm cheating, I'm using tranny fluid, but not that I don't have engine oil, that just happens to be what's in my can. So I've just dripped some oil around all the bolts, the inside ones and the outside ones. Now these torques could be wrong, I'm not certain, but this is what I'm going by. This is an older, an older book, 1970 to 1980, but it should still be similar for this type of small block, and I'm going to go according to this torque chart on this one. Now the final torque on all these bolts is uh, 80 pounds according to that book but I'm going to start out with 25 you should do it in three intervals so start it at 25 so I've got my torque wrench set for 25 foot pounds so I'm going to do a 25, 50 and then up to 80 where the final torque is and it's just basically in a circle Center one. Next one back on the inside. Fourth one from the back on the outside. One forward from there. Fourth one from the front on the inside. Third one from the back on the inside. Third one from the back on the outside. Third one from the front on the outside. Third one from the front on the inside. Second one from the back on the inside. Second one from the back on the outside. Second one from the front on the outside. Second one from the front on the inside. The very back one. On the inside, the very back one on the outside, the very first one on the outside, the very first one on the inside. And then I'm going to turn my torque wrench up to the full 80 foot pounds and do it one more time. Before you get too far along, a good idea is to get your hoses, your fuel lines pulled into place up here. And there's a ground strap in the back of this head. It can be a real pain to get at, so I always try and get that on as soon as I can before you clutter everything full. And I'm just using a 916 stubby wrench to get it to get it tight. So next I want to put the push rods in, but first I'm gonna get a little bit of some pre-lube and I'm just gonna put a little bit on each lifter. Put the push rods back in. Make sure that they land right inside the lifter. I also forgot to mention that uh, you should make sure that these holes are clear. It should be hollow all the way through. So I've got all those on there. And just put a little shot of pre-lube down in there to lubricate that bushing or squirt some engine oil in there that'll do and put your lock nuts on Flat side down. 
Now that you've got the cylinder head installed, you're going to want to do a pre-adjustment on the valves. And here's a link to the video on how I pre-adjusted the valves. And right here there's a video on how to install the intake. I'm not really too proud of that video because I didn't make it to the parts store that day in, when I was doing that video. So I reused an old gasket on that video, but it does give you the general idea of how to put the intake back on. So thanks for watching, and keep in mind that this is a mud truck that I work on. Subscribe if you like, and like if you like.